let's say you're aiming for a top 15 school and you're majoring in something STEM. I would say the summer program repertoire or your, your resume of summer programs is going to make a significant impact uh, on your admission chances. So what I have in front of you here today, uh, it's pretty easy, guys. Like, you know, I, I meet with parents and students all the time, and I think they come to us like, hey, what's the summer programs that will get us into good colleges or, or advice about summer programs? And the truth is you can find that list online. You can just Google it. Um, it comes down later on into how you talk about your summer programs in your essays and in your interviews, um, how those summer programs align to maybe your major strategy and things like that. Like, it's not just about, is there a secret list of summer programs, Jay? The answer there is no. You could pretty much Google it all. But with that being said, um, MIT does this really cool thing where they keep up to date a list of their own of what they think are the premier programs that, that appeal to them. Um, I would argue if you're applying for STEM, any kind of STEM major for a top 15 school, um, you should be vying for one of these summer programs on this list. Like another way of saying it is if you got into one of these summer programs or two of these summer programs, uh, that's a huge buff to, to, to your chances, to your resume. So here they are, nice and sweet. The MIT summer programs that they offer is MITES, RSI, WTP. So there's one that's specifically for girls too. Um, SSP. Those of you guys who... <coughs> excuse me, are um, in the know of, or, or have tiger parents who have done all their research should know RSI. They should know SSP. Uh, there's also Beaverworks. I consider Beaverworks to be the premier when it comes to any kind of engineering student. Um, I think you, it's to me, uh, you should consider it highly, highly. Uh, it starts off, it's a little bit unique. It starts off with courses and you have to complete a series of coursework and then you get invited, I believe, to, to the, the intensive program. Uh, you could read more about there. I could be off. Um, then there's other programs like LaunchX. LaunchX to me is more of like a STEM slash entrepreneur business. Uh, they you do like a startup kind of uh, case competition-y kind of thing. Uh, there's LL Rise and then there are the ID Tech Camps. ID Tech Camps, I think, are all right. They're pretty solid. And then there's the other selective summer programs. This is, um, this is like the S tier list to me. These, this, this is the list of summer programs where you don't always have to actually be a STEM major. Like for example, some of these you can look and they're going to be, um, uh, they're going to have broad or multiple categories, different types of disciplines. So from economics to social science research to then hard physics and, and the hard sciences and engineering. So you might want to take a look. Obviously, some of these are not going to be flexible, like the young physicists, ISSYP, but things like the Clark Scholars Program. I've seen students get in with a mixture of machine learning and economics and um, multiple things like that. So these summer programs are not just for STEM, but they're S tier. These, these are the programs that if I see that you got into this, I'm immediately interested in you. I think they're basically a precursor admission to uh, an Ivy League or a top 15 school. Uh, Clark Scholars, one of my favorites, it's probably one of the hardest, if not the hardest, I'd say, to get into simply because you get paid to go. I think they give you like a $750 stipend for participating. So they're looking for students who can actually do valuable work. You cannot be forcing a kid who's been forced the whole way to go to these summer programs, go to these SAT camps, and they're just kind of being pushed to it. These are actually students who are brilliant, who are engaged, who are independent, mature, responsible, like they, they are going to look for the best candidates. And I think that's why a lot of top schools will raise an eyebrow when they see that a student was admitted and experienced one of these programs. Uh, but this to me would be the S tier. And then there's the specific math ones. Guys, I've been a fan of applied mathematics as a major. If you're going to do engineering, but you don't think you have kind of the competitive edge for that. What's a less competitive major that gives me more range? Well, if you're really strong in math and you really have that kind of math background and summer program experience, for example, these, uh, 
then I sometimes recommend applied mathematics as the major direction. And if you go back to a video that I posted maybe five, six videos ago about the November mar uh, major choice competitive majors for UCs, which I use as a barometer for all other top tier schools, um, you'll see that applied math, like look at the acceptance rate for it. It's, compare that to computer science at UCLA, which is 2%. And you kind of start to get the idea. Uh, but yeah. I just wanted to do a quick little video to showcase what do I recommend for STEM majors and sometimes not even STEM. Uh, some of these you can parse out to showcase that because they have non-STEM options as well. Um, I'll provide the link to this below. Hope that was helpful.